Recently, I've spent a lot of time inside. It's been odd not having anything to work towards and nothing productive to do. I found myself wanting more from life. It turns out I'm not alone. An increasingly popular way of getting more out of life is through hiring a life coach. These self-professed experts make up an over billion pound industry, although it's an unregulated one. There are life coaches that help with all facets of life, from money and family, all the way to things like relationships and hobbies. So are they the real deal or modern day snake oil salesmen? My mission is to answer this question by immersing myself in the world of life coaching, to gain a deeper understanding of who coaches are, what they do, and potentially change my life along the way. My search began by finding live coaches to chat to. I spoke with David Wilson, a coach who is dedicated to helping others with sobriety, Jenny Evans, who focuses on empowering women to get more from life, and last but not least, Carol Ann Rice, a life coach with over 16 years experience under her belt. Let's hear what they had to say. In your own words, what is life coaching? A lot of people ask me that because they think it's like therapy. Now, a life coach um, is about the here and now, the present moment in time and the future. So we're not uh, past orientated. That's what the shrink does. Uh, so we help people in this very moment in time co-create a future that they like to step into. And quite often people can't see what they want for their future or they can see, but they don't know how to get there. So the coach's job is to get clarity on what that is and to find out what's stopping them from getting there on their own. I was interested in getting a first-hand experience of coaching, so I did a month of weekly sessions with Jenny Evans. This introduced me to, amongst other things, breathing exercises, identifying things I'm grateful for, and having conversations to change my perspective on different aspects of life, all in an effort to be more positive. Jenny is someone who used to live in the UK, but thanks to life coaching, has moved to Italy, where she holds life coaching retreats. I felt safe knowing that I had a coach that had been successful themselves, but this made me curious. Would you say that there is a certain level of success in life or sort of ex experience in life that's needed to become a coach? I think um, life experience comes into play, but you've got to be careful with that because you can't use your own examples in a coaching session. You know, you can learn yourself by your your life experience and you can use them in certain situations, but you've got to be completely non-biased. Anything that you're coaching and helping people on, I think it is quite key that you've been through that experience or a similar experience. And the other element of that is then knowing how to coach that person. That's, you know, you need to know how to coach people, how to help them feel empowered, how to ask the right questions, have the right skill set um, to be able to do that. So, you know, set the right environment, have the right approach. So all of that, there's so many elements of being a coach. Very few jobs in life or professions allow you the opportunity to shine as you get older, but life coaching does. My conclusion on this one is I think life coaching is a balance between having the right life experience so you can confidently tell people what to do, but also having the right social skills to get the most out of any given client. Now, to be honest, when I started making this documentary, I expected to be sold the 10 steps to get rich or the secret to happiness. But after chatting to these people, I found actual life coaches, at least in the UK, are a lot more down to earth and essentially help you identify where you want to be and how to get there and help motivate you along the way. But why do so many people, myself included, initially hold a negative preconception of life coaches? A lot of people have a negative preconception of life coaches. Why do you think this is? It's interesting because I, I lived in Canada for 10 years. So um, the North American culture is incredibly different from Europe and certainly from the UK. And there's a lot more skepticism around coaches in the UK than in the US and Canada. There's many reasons, but a couple of the reasons, one of them is that people don't actually believe it works. So they believe that, well, I am who I am and I can't change. So therefore, if you're a coach and you're helping people change, then you, you know, you may be a charlatan or you're just in it for the money because it doesn't really work. So there's that element of skepticism. It's interesting that you mentioned the uh, 
different cultures sort of reminds me Ricky Gervais quote um, he sort of says Americans are the way they are because they're told you could be president one day whereas in the UK you're told it's probably not going to happen to you um, yeah absolutely North Americans are told you can go you know it's the land of the free it's the land of opportunity a lot of people's success is based on what you do for a living what how much money you earn um, and in in England, we, you know, it's a, it tends to be a culture of not feeling good enough. I do. I think it's because of people not presenting themselves very well when you see them, and they're often comic figures in <laughs> sitcoms as well. Um, and there are a lot of, I can do a weekend course and suddenly I'm a life coach. There are proper ethical guidelines that we must stick to as coaches. And I think it's because it's unregulated. Um, that people sort of laugh at it and they haven't had experience of it and I think coaches need to be a bit more um, serious about that and to set, consider themselves career professionals not paid for friends because we are actually changing people's thoughts and their lives and it's it's a proper profession in America coaches ten thousand dollars an hour Bill Gates uses a coach Oprah has a coach you know uh, it's really serious over there over here it's kind of like you know, when I first started, people said, are you an interior designer? During my research, I found out the life coaching industry is recently grown, particularly in the UK. Do you think there is a reason for this? Yeah, I do, because well, apart from the lockdown, it's really made people think, I don't want to go back to the life I had before. I don't want to commute. I don't want to live in this house. I don't want to do this job. So that's been a bit of an existential wake up call for the whole world. So I'm very busy at the moment. I know other coaches are very busy. Um, but I also think it's, it's good guys like you and the generation slightly before you who are saying, I want more out of life. And you are emotionally intelligent, this generation. I don't like the, the you just are. You're kinder, you're more empathetic, you're interested in life in a way that our parents, my parents, weren't. Um, their, their, their kind of mantra was duty and getting on with it and you, you know, make your bed and you lie in it. You just get on with it, you don't expect more. And I think people do want more. They're interested in what life can offer. It's the, they can have unconventional lives. They can have portfolio careers. It's not one size fits all anymore. And I think there's a, a groundswell of interest in having the best life full of potential adventure and not just settling. You don't have to settle anymore. And I think it's the younger people now are really getting, they want them more out of life. And they ask the bigger questions about it. At this point, I completed my coaching with Jenny. And the big question still stands. So, did my experience of life coaching completely change my life? No, but I will be honest, it has completely changed my perspective on life coaching and things like the breathing exercises did make me feel more positive on a day-to-day -day basis. I also had a few penny drop moments with Jenny which made me perceive aspects of my life in a completely different way. I think in this day and age where we're more mindful of how happy we are in our lives that it makes sense for the life coaching industry to increase in popularity in the UK. So would I say life coaching was worth it? I think for the purposes of this documentary and learning more about the world it was, but I'm undecided on whether or not I would use one in my personal life. Although I can see how having a coach could be useful if you were trying to achieve a specific goal. My biggest takeaway from this whole experience is simply the power of taking a break this may seem obvious to some of you, but in my head, if it's not a directly productive use of my time, I'm probably going to avoid it. But I found taking 5 or 10 minutes to recharge and break down the task ahead of you can be extremely valuable, no matter what task you are facing. And I suppose that's the essence of what I wanted from life coaching. I changed how I perceived the use of my time so I could put myself in a better position to be more productive. That's my take, but what kind of takeaways can we get from the professionals? What would you say is some good general advice for leading a happy life? I think being honest with yourself, you know, if you're honest, that goes a long way in your life. The more you feel good, the more you feel good. And I'm not talking about pretending everything's okay and constantly being happy, but I'm talking about being mindful of your thoughts and focusing on the positive and focusing on the things that are working for you but just manage your thoughts be aware of what you're thinking because it affects how you're feeling and, it, and remember, remember too that it's temporary even the bad times are temporary it will pass the tide comes in 
drowns everything, the tide goes out, the sun comes up, the birds chatter again. <laughs>